Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 12th of October 2020. And although it is Columbus Day in the United States and therefore a holiday, we thought we would give a slight heads up as to what is actually happening over the pond. In other words, this side of the pond in the United Kingdom. And how banks are being prepared for negative interest rates. Despite the Bank of England stating previously... That's the last place they wish to go. So let's take a look. Now, before we talk about negative interest rates, it's useful to remind you that yesterday we produced episode two in our are we reaching peak gold series and we've placed links to this in the description box below in addition to links to our gold and silver weekly update for the weekend in the 9th of october which we published on saturday we're doing this on a regular basis because we are fully aware that youtube unlike with the pumper channels do not actively promote our videos and so we have to accept that listeners may not be aware of all of our productions as and when they come out. Now today we wish to speak briefly about negative interest rates. The Fed has already technically ruled these out, at least for now, and so had the Bank of England, though since September it's began slowly changing its mind, or at least making comments which suggest it may be changing its mind on this subject. So let's take a look at a brief article published by Reuters earlier today on this very issue. Reuters article dated 12th of October 2020. Headline, Bank of England asks banks how ready they are for sub-zero rates. The Bank of England asked banks on Monday how ready they are for zero or negative interest rates following up its announcement last month that it was considering how to take rates below zero if necessary. Other central banks have pushed rates into negative territory in an attempt to spur banks to lend more, and the Bank of England said in September it was looking into what such a policy might mean in Britain. As part of this work, we are requesting specific information about your firm's current readiness to deal with a zero bank rate, a negative bank rate, or a tiered system of reserves remuneration, and the steps that you would need to take to prepare for the implementation of these. Unquote. Deputy Bank of England Governor Sam Woods said in a letter to banks. The Bank of England and lenders had to understand the implications of any such moves, since the MPC may see fit to choose various options based on the situation at the time, he said, referring to the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee. Wood said he wanted to know if there were any technology challenges to implementing zero or negative rates. We're also seeking to understand whether there may be potential for short-term solutions or workarounds, as well as permanent system changes, he said. The Bank of England set a deadline of November 12th, a week after its next monetary policy announcement, for banks to respond. Most Eurozone banks have held off passing negative rates onto the bulk of their retail customers, despite borrowing costs being below zero for the majority of this decade. However, UK banks would likely face a sharper hit to profitability if they opted not to shift rates in line with the Bank of England due to their differing business models. Banks in most Eurozone countries charge customers a fee for having accounts, whereas in Britain such charges are rare and lenders' returns are largely based on the difference between lending and deposit rates. Money markets last week pushed back bets that the Bank of England would cut rates below zero. Investors see rates falling below zero in May 2021 instead of March. BOE Watch. 
The Bank of England cut its benchmark rate to record low of 0.1% in March to help the economy through the coronavirus crisis. Its next move is widely expected to be an increase in its £745 billion, the equivalent of $972 billion, bond buying programme in November. Sterling and British government bonds were little changed in early trade on Monday. Governor Andrew Bailey has said the Bank of England's assessment of negative rates was not a sign that it would cut rates below zero, and Woods echoed those comments in his letter. Banks earn money from interest and negative rates would hit profitability, but Woods' letter made no specific mention of this, focusing instead on the technical preparedness of lenders. An accompanying questionnaire asked banks how their retail and wholesale businesses' IT systems could cope and how much time and money it would cost to make short-term tactical and permanent strategic changes. Banks are already under pressure to help households and businesses struggling with the pandemic. They also could face a reduction in access to markets in, Europe, in the European Union when Britain's post-Brexit transition period expires. So, we can see that despite what the governor of the Bank of England has said, it does look as if they are at least preparing the way for negative rates in the United Kingdom. Now, for those of us holding gold and silver, that can be regarded potentially as a positive measure, as it makes it less attractive for people to keep their money in banks, as they will be charged to do so, and undoubtedly some of that surplus cash will find its way into precious metals. Now, in addition, negative rates and more stimulus undoubtedly has a negative impact on the value of one's currency, as this action will cause banks to lend more, thereby increasing credit and de facto more money in circulation. And so the cycle continues. Now, we shall update you more on this as we will receive additional reports which we have being part or previously part of the banking fraternity. And once we receive those additional reports, we shall share them with you. But all we can say at present is watch this space. Now, meanwhile, both gold and silver have fallen ever so slightly today. But as we stated, US markets generally uh, are closed because of the holiday. And although the article is two hours out of date, that we're going to read to you, looking at precious metal prices, they're currently not that far removed from when the Reuters article was printed. So here's a brief summary, as reported by Reuters, on today's developments. Reuters article dated October 12th, 2020. Headline. Gold falls from three-week peak on smaller US stimulus bets. US government Bond market closed for Columbus Day. Trump administration calls for stripped-down relief bill. Gold prices fell from a three-week peak on Monday as expectations of a limited U.S. coronavirus relief bill dented the appeal of bullion, which is used as a hedge against likely inflation. Spot gold fell 0.3% at $1,924 an ounce by 10.14 a.m. EDT after hitting its highs since September 21st at $1,932.96. U.S. gold futures rose 0.2% of $1,930.70. The U.S. government and bond market is closed on Monday for Columbus Day. The possibility of a smaller U.S. coronavirus stimulus bill is weighing on gold, said Philip Streibel, chief market strategist at Blue Line Futures in Chicago. We're talking trillions in stimulus one day, and it's billions the next day. And it will probably be millions next. It feels like it's getting smaller coming into the election, Stribal said. The Trump administration on Sunday called on Congress to pass a stripped-down coronavirus relief bill using leftover funds as negotiations on a broader package ran into resistance. Gold has gained over 26% so far this year, helped by stimulus from governments and global central banks, as it considered a hedge against inflation risks and currency weakening. Meanwhile, Wall Street's main indices opened higher on optimism about a fiscal stimulus deal in Washington. Investors were also keeping a close eye 
on the upcoming US elections, where Democrat Joe Biden is seen as more likely to win. Gold will be high if Biden wins because he will spend a lot of money, said Bob Harbacorn, senior market strategist at RJO Futures, adding any unknowns on the election night will also provide support. Among other precious metals, silver slipped 0.2% to 2507 per ounce, platinum fell 0.9% to $878.50 per ounce, while palladium edged 0.3% higher to $2,446.73 per ounce. End of article. Okay. In fact, at the moment, gold is now 1924 that's $1,924, and silver is $25.13, and this is at 1846 GMT plus one, while the US dollar has strengthened, albeit just very slightly. So what's your view on negative rates? And do you see them coming into the United States? And if so, how soon? Please share your thoughts. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, kindly subscribe to the channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. And also, please pop along to our Richard and Greg channel, where yesterday we posted a video based on our Empire and Dynasty series that we started last week, where we covered China, and this week we've covered Russia. So do pop along to that, and again, hopefully, subscribe to that channel, if, of course, you can stand listening to Greg and I for 30 minutes or so. Thank you once again. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.